Hello everybody and happy Thursday evening to all of you. It is time for the second video in my series of educational videos of the animals of the Sharon Zoo. I'm hoping to do one every Thursday night. Hold on one second. We got baby screaming. What's the matter, baby? Baby, baby? No screaming, okay? He may not let me get through this video. You play with Bob. Here, honey. You play with Bob while mommy does this, okay? No, I know you want attention. I know, I know, I know. Everyone's got apples, so he wants apples. Anyway, I think you can figure out by who's out here what we are going to learn about tonight. We are going to learn about macaws and African greys. So we will start off with RJ. RJ is my beautiful blue and gold macaw, as you can tell. She's got blue and yellow or gold feathers with a little green on the forehead, and that's totally typical for a blue and gold macaw. She is 24 years old. Again, her name is RJ. I named her after my nephew, Ryan Jason. She was in a pet store for a little over a year, and um, she had a broken toe, and I would visit her all the time, and I got her so long ago. And um, I felt so bad that she wasn't coming out of the, uh, look at how good he's being, that she wasn't being uh, sold, and she was just staying in a cage in this little pet store. So they gave me a wonderful price on her, and that's how she came into my life. Um, she did have a broken toe. Maybe that happened during transport. I don't know, but she, no one was buying her, so I felt horrible. So I took her in. Uh, anyway, so blue and gold macaws, they are from South America. They're tropical birds. They uh, love the heat and moisture, so that's why I bathe them all the time. And I always keep my, uh, my house at a, at a steady temperature for them. I have it regulated so that everyone has a nice, a nice warm environment. It's never, ever cold, no matter what time of year it is. Um, and they are a very popular parrot uh, because of their brightly colored feathers, as you see. Yeah, and everybody uh, knows what a blue and gold macaw looks like. They are very, very familiar to everybody. They, uh, they love to socialize. They're very even-tempered, so that makes them a really good uh, pet for a very experienced um, bird owner. They're, they're not the easiest bird to have, and you really have to have knowledge of parrots to own one of these. Um, so they're very intelligent, and they, uh, they thrive on attention from its owner. And they'll get, and they form a very, very strong bond with you. Um, so they really require special attention. As you see, they're very large, so they need a lot of room to live and to play and to exercise. And their beaks, as you see, are very, very big. They're extremely powerful. They use them to climb and hang, and they break large nuts with them. Um, you know, the nutshells sometimes are very hard. So they have to be able to break through them. What's the matter? Apple? <laughs> you have apple right there. Apple? Yes, eat your apple. Apple? As you see, which is, I'm kind of in a way glad he's doing this because this is part of the education about owning a macaw. That blood-curdling scream that you hear that he thinks is so funny is not funny to a lot of people and definitely not funny to your neighbors. So that's something that you have to seriously think about when you purchase a macaw. Right, baby? Yeah. Will you eat your apple now? Everybody doesn't even see that you threw all your apples down. They think that you are dying for apples, but look at all those apples in front of him, and he really doesn't even care. Apple? Yeah, apple, apple. Can I go finish teaching people about blue and gold macaws? Can you eat your... No? No? Huh? We can't have that screaming, honey. Yeah, this is going to be fun. See, he throws it. He just throws it. He's a very silly, silly bird. There he goes. There he goes. And if I ignore him, I still don't think he's going to stop. So 
their <laughs> this is going to be a crazy video. Their beaks are so strong, they can actually seriously they can crush every bone in your hand if they bite your hand. They are so powerful, it's unbelievable. So you have to be incredibly, incredibly careful around a macaw and you never ever ever stick your hand near a macaw's mouth if you don't know the bird and the owner is not standing right there and tells you that it's okay to pet the bird so anyway so they need to be socialized properly because of these uh very strong beaks and their intelligence they need uh plenty of mental stimulation so um so the screaming doesn't become a habit out of boredom because that's what happens they get bored and then they start screaming and screaming and screaming and nobody wants that nobody wants that <sighs> so they need in terms of diet they need a very very healthy diet I feed all my birds pellets uh, it's a specially formulated diet for parrots. I don't, I do not give seeds to my birds. So when you have a specially formulated diet for your birds, which my macaws all get, all my birds get it, you really don't have to supplement with any vitamins because they get everything from their uh, pellets. But you can supplement with some fruits and vegetables and nuts, you know, just, you know, to supplement. The main diet should be their pellets and that's it. To own one of these birds, you really have to do a ton of research. Research is key. And you want to know that you have an avian vet that uh, is close enough for an emergency. That's a vet that takes care of birds. <laughs> yes, honey. <laughs> so anyway, the lifespan of uh, a blue and gold macaw is 60 plus years and possibly until 100 years old. So that's a lifetime commitment. So you have to realize that, again, while, when you get one of these birds, this is a lifetime that you're committing to this animal. Okay, let's go to this one. Let's go to this one. This is Rio. Rio is six years old. He is a military macaw. He, I got from another bird store. A friend of mine owned a bird store, and... This bird was not being sold either. Wow. They're, not, they're not very popular because of their coloring. Even though I absolutely love them, they're not as, shh, don't tell them, but they're not as gorgeous as the blue and gold. So they don't have many of them um, because they don't sell a lot of them. I happen to think they're absolutely gorgeous. This is why, guys, you have to know what you're getting into when you get a macaw. Because this is what they do when they want attention. You see, now the other one is screaming for me. So I can just go back and forth with this. <laughs> anyway, so... The military macaw, so anyway, so I got this bird. He gave him to me because he wasn't selling them, and he knew I would take good care of him. So that's how Rio came to our house uh, five years ago, uh, and he's six years old now. So anyway, they got their name, I believe, from, um, they were brought to Egypt by military personnel, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what I heard. So they became military macaws because of that. Um... What else about them? Hmm. Their, let's see, their lifespan. I think their lifespan is about 60 years, probably more if, you know, well taken care of, but average 60 years for, for a uh, military macaw. What happened? Sammy, Sammy, don't do that, honey. Don't do that, babe. Wow, this is going to be a tough video to get through, but actually, let's step over here. Since baby is being so obnoxious, and yes, they're obnoxious. They're beyond obnoxious. Let's go to baby. Baby is called a severe macaw. Baby is 27 years old, and he was also a gift to me a long, long time ago. Hey, can we not scream? Now, everyone's going to ask why his feathers are gone. Baby's feathers are gone because when he was young, he had a major trauma. 
he got his leg caught in the scroll work of his wrought iron cage and I was unable to get his leg out for quite a while and did a lot of damage to his leg and to his foot and he had to make multiple visits to the vet um, because of this and um, and he started chewing off his toes and biting his feathers, pulling them out. And once a bird starts pulling their feathers, it becomes a habit. And then the uh, follicles die. And then they can't grow back. I'm trying to get some of his feathers to grow back now. I'm trying some new spray, which, which is kind of working. Because he is growing feathers here on his back. And he's growing feathers over here. So maybe he'll get some feathers, but he'll never, ever, ever get all his feathers back. It's, it's absolutely impossible. So that's, so that's why uh, he looks like he does. Yes, I know. So um, severe macaws, they're, they're good talkers, but they're not the best. Um, same with the uh, blue and gold macaw and the mil mil military macaw. They're not the best talkers, but they absolutely can say they could have a very big vocabulary, but not the best of talkers of all the parrots. They are the largest of the mini macaw, which is uh, what Baby is. Baby is a macaw, but he's uh, a smaller version of the blue and gold than the uh, severe macaw. He's more of a medium-sized macaw, but he's the largest of the mini, they call them mini macaws. Um, the lifespan of a bird-like Baby is about 30 to 40 years. And they got their name, I think, severe because they, because uh, of their aggressive behavior that was observed at some point. So they acquired the uh, name Severe Macaw. But Baby is hysterical. They are really funny and comical. And he is a happy, happy bird. And he is quite old since their lifespan is 30 to 40 years. And he's already 27. So he's already up there in age. And I've had him for so, so long. Right, baby? All right, let's move on to Botten. Everyone loves Botten also. Botten is an African gray, also called a Congo gray or red-tailed gray. There's also a Timna gray. That's one that's a little smaller and is mostly gray and maybe a little maroon on the tail, but mostly darker, uh, but a little smaller than the uh, African gray or the Congo gray. See that red tail? He's showing you his red tail. <laughs> anyway, they're from West and Central uh, Africa. And the amaz amazing thing about them is that they are the only parrots, the only parrots in the world that can talk with comprehension. Yes, they can talk with comprehension, which means what they say, they know what they're saying. They know what they're talking about. They can use their words properly. So that is quite amazing. So that's why they need a ton of mental stimulation. And um, they need to have a lot of interaction with, with people, with other birds. With, they just need that kind of stimulation because they're so, so highly intelligent. And also cage placement. I didn't talk about cage placement. Cage pa uh, placement for most parrots um, you do not want them to be in the middle of a room. You want their cages that they stay in most of the time to be against a wall or in a corner. That's where they feel the safest. They don't want to be in the middle of a room, that's for sure. So anyway, the diet of an African Grey and also the same as, the, it's the same as the other macaws. They all need, the best for them is the pellets that pelleted diet specially formulated for them. They are uh, extremely sensitive and very demanding. As you guys know, Botten, very, very demanding, very sensitive, will get jealous, will uh, get very upset with certain things. So because of that, it can lead to behavioral issues. So they are creatures of habit. And even a small change in their routine really can make them very unhappy, believe it or not. So that's why when you see me um, with the same routine every single day, I do this uh, on purpose. I, they, birds really need routine. Actually, a lot of animals do, but birds especially, especially these highly intelligent birds, they need a routine. So that's what I try to do for them every single day. 
is have the same routine and then they're very comfortable and very uh, content. What else, what else? They are extremely social also, like the uh, blue and gold macaw and the uh, military macaw. And, but they don't, they love a lot of hands-on time, but they don't like, they're not cuddly. They don't really like to be cuddled and touched too much. Maybe a little head scratching here and there, but they're not the cuddly, snuggly kind of bird. But they, uh, but actually they're all different, you know, so you never know. Everyone's got, they, all of them have different personalities, but most of them, they, they're really not the snuggly type. Um, but they do get very attached to one person. Even if everyone in the house is, you know, socializes with them, they really get attached to one person. They're a one person bird. Um, and that's, that's who I am to, uh, to Button. He'll be okay with other people, but I'm his main focus. What, baby? Are you trying to say something? Apple, apple. Apple, apple? Really? Is that what you're saying? Apple, apple? So their lifespan is about 50 years, but some, unfortunately, only live to about 30 to 40 years. So, these birds are a huge, huge commitment. We're not talking about a little guinea pig or a hamster or a rabbit that don't live, you know, so long. We're talking about they could live your whole life. And then a lot of times you are willing them away when you pass away. So we are talking a huge commitment. And because of their uh, strong bond that they, that they all have with their, uh, with their owners. Oh, look who joined them. Look who joined them. Harpo, come here, honey. So because of their strong bond, when you rehome them, they, go, they get extremely uh, depressed. I want to go back to baby, but I hate to, I hate to give in to his uh, to his screaming. You want to go upside down? You want to show them how you go upside down? Yeah. Woo! You like that? Want to go upside down? Woo! 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 What? You want to go too? You want to do it too? What? You want to do it too? I don't think you like it. I don't think you like doing that. Only RJ likes it. Do you want to come up? No, you want to stay. Stop. You want to stay. You want to stay. So, big, big commitment, guys. So, only if you're looking for a bird and you do not have experience or, you're not, or you are not willing to put in the time and effort it takes to have one of these amazing creatures, please, I beg you, beg you, beg you. Leave them for someone else to adopt or buy. Please, please, please do not take them in your life. <laughs> oh, my God. If you can't deal with this. Now, they do not scream all the time. Or I would not be able to live my life. That's for sure. This is only because I'm not paying attention to him. As you see, when I come up to him, he stops. Yeah, Apple. It's all about attention. That's all it's about, right? So this is why I dedicated my life to them because if I'm gonna own them, it is not fair if you don't. You cannot stick them in a cage and ignore them. As you see, they truly need your undivided attention. <laughs> yeah, apple. Apple, apple, apple. Anyway, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap this up tonight. I think, uh, if, again, if you have any questions, um, I think I, I didn't really go over too much there in closures, but they need a huge case, cage. I'm going to do this before, before I sign off here. I want to show you the size cage that would be appropriate for a macaw. You see that cage? I could fit in that cage. That is the size cage that you should be having for a blue and gold macaw, a military macaw, or any kind of these large macaws. They need that kind of cage and they need a ton of out time. They cannot be stuck in that cage, even that big cage, for uh, long periods of time. Now, I don't mind baby screaming. 
but I don't like him screaming uh, while I'm videotaping because it ruins my video. <laughs> Baby, are you obnoxious? But as you see, the minute I walk over to him, he stops and he's totally fine. Yeah. So I think I've proven my point that their screaming is ear piercing, ear piercing. So if you have neighbors, they are not going to like you. They are absolutely not going to like you. But I promise you, my birds do not scream all the time. This is only because I'm doing a video and the other birds are yelling now because I came home and I haven't taken them out yet. I need to take them out so they can fly around. Uh, otherwise, it's always pretty quiet here. And during the day when I'm at work, they're, they're totally quiet. As you've seen from my sneak up on the kids, you don't hear a peep until they see me. So anyway, this is your second video in a series of educational videos of the Sharon Zoo animal. <laughs> I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll try to answer every single one of them. And please, I will always say this, do your research before you purchase any animal. Bye, guys. We'll see you later.